Hey everyone, this is Nick Metz from Code 4 Counseling and I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Tracy Trelor. She is one of the therapists at Code 4 Counseling. And uh, Tracy has been with us for a while and is just a, a phenomenal therapist and really, really <laughs> cares about responders and their families. And so, but one of the things that Tracy specializes in, and some of you may have heard about this, is what's called EMDR. Now don't ask me to recite back to you what that means, so <laughs> I'm gonna let Tracy do that. Um, so Tracy, thank you for being here today. I really appreciate yeah, it. No problem. And uh, as I told you before, uh, folks that are, are watching this right now are either folks who are um, have an interest in, in mm -hmm. uh, doing therapy um, oh, okay. as either licensed therapists, or they're actually becoming peer support members for their respective responder agencies. So awesome. um, I thought it would really be a good idea to be able to hear from you a little mm -hmm. bit about what you do at Code 4, particularly when it comes to EMDR. Okay. Uh, we, we talk about EMDR a lot in our peer support training, but I don't think we really do justice in explaining what that is. So I thought, okay. again, it would be really good to have you here. So before we get started, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I've been with Code for uh, two to three years now. It's absolutely one of my favorite places I've worked, not just saying that. <laughs> um, I'm originally from Southern California. I got my bachelor's in psychology there, got my master's in counseling psychology there. Um, I've worked with a few different populations over the years. I've been doing this for about 10 years, but I've worked with people on the autism spectrum, a little bit in the school system, I've mostly worked with addictions, doing um, mental health evaluations, substance abuse evaluations, and therapy for drug courts. And I'm now working with first responders, which has just been such an amazing change. What is it about working with responders that you enjoy? Oh man, it's just there's something so special about working with the people who do so much for our community you know, kind of helping the people who help us on a daily basis, putting their, their lives on the line. Also, it's just a lot of cool personalities. <laughs> <laughs> and a little, little crazy at times. A little I'm crazy, sure. but it's yeah. good crazy. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> and um, what about your education background? Oh, like my, the bachelor's, yeah. master's in counseling psychology was an emphasis on um, marriage and family therapy. Okay. And what else? Training in EMDR. That was about seven years ago mm -hmm. and continuous education on different topics. And um, when you decided to work with responders and it sounds like you mm -hmm. kind of do a little bit of everything, you, you do couples counseling, you do obviously mm -hmm. EMDR, you work with people who have been through trauma. Mm -hmm. What has that been like, particularly in working with responders? It's been great. I mean, I'll get people asking me, gosh, what's it like working with first responders? What kind of stuff do they tell mm -hmm. you about? Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's like the, the gory stuff, but more than anything, it's just very human problems that everybody else deals with. Right. Just with a lot more emphasis on the trauma from their work. Right. Um, go ahead. Oh, what no, no, that? no, no. That's totally fine. <laughs> um, so obviously we're here mainly to talk about your work doing EMDR. Um, can you tell us first, what does EMDR stand for? <laughs> Eye movement desensitization reprocessing. And what got you interested in that and, and how does it work? Oh gosh, that's a great question. It was partly doing my own EMDR trauma work for myself and being at a really amazing workshop where somebody came in and talked about it and how effective it is and how amazing it mm -hmm. is. Um, I just, since I've been doing about seven years now, it has really opened up a whole new piece of my career. It makes a huge difference on how people feel, how people heal from their trauma than talk therapy, which is also great, but this especially just kicks in really well. So do you, is it fair to say you incorporate talk therapy with mm -hmm. EMDR? I do EMDR. I love CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, yeah, I do a lot of both things. Mm -hmm. It's all incorporated. Got it, got it. When, how do you decide when someone is a good candidate for EMDR? Mm, I would say definitely a trauma history. If they have events where it's, you know, 
cut and dry trauma like abuse or things that have happened or they've seen on the job or you know a horrific accident they've been in um, PTSD symptoms then I know okay we need to talk about EMDR or somebody who just has a perspective on things that's difficult for them and they can't really quite see their way through it mm -hmm. to something different and why is EMDR effective Oh, so there are so many things we can <laughs> in, get in, into. In five minutes or less, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things we can get into with the neurobiology of EMDR and how it affects the brain, yada, yada. But at the base of it, if you can get the left and the right side of the brain to communicate back and forth over and over while you're thinking about a specific event, it opens up the trauma networks, sort of in this limbic system. And... It just creates a desensitization of the trauma and you're able to gain new perspectives and bring current information into old problems. Can you elaborate on that part just a little bit more? Which part of it? The, the bringing the old mm -hmm. problems back or, the, or desensitizing. Let's just go start with there. So desensitizing, you know, you might come in with PTSD symptoms like, you know, racing, heart rate, feeling like you have flashbacks you can't get out of this place where you know the trauma just feels like it's still happening so you do the emdr and it sometimes can take multiple sessions just depending on the person and they will just start to go through the event over and over again and sometimes it can be painful i'm not going to lie about that but at some point you just start to feel less affected by it and you're able to get to a place of okay, it's over now, or I accept that it happened, or, oh, this is actually what that was about. This is why I'm so upset about it. It wasn't the actual event itself. So when you say painful, are you talking about physically painful or emotionally painful? No, emotionally painful. painful. And we, we get people prepared for that ahead of time. We do what's called resourcing, where we do a lot of skill building, like breathing exercises, imagination, um, muscle relaxation, compartmentalization, so that mm -hmm. they're ready for that emotion to come up in the mm -hmm. session. Mm -hmm. And is it a one session deal? Is it, how long does, how long does someone typically participate in EMDR? And everybody is so different, mm -hmm. you know, absolutely bare minimum two sessions. Cause you know, you need to get the history, you need to develop your plan for how you want to go about EMDR because different people have different needs with EMDR too. Um, more often than not, we're talking maybe a couple of months. If somebody has an extensive trauma history like childhood abuse, it could take longer. It mm -hmm. just depends. And some people take longer to prepare for actual reprocessing than others. And how do you gauge when it's working? How do you know it's working? Um, I would say if a client is feeling emotional during the actual processing, we know that we're hitting on something important. We know that we're bringing up that trauma network and it's working its way through the system. And then I really know it's working if by the end of session or when they come in the following session, they say, you know, I don't really feel much. It just doesn't really bother me anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it feels, I kind of feel okay. Now, I've heard some people say it's a form of hypnotherapy. Is it? Mm -hmm. Is it? No. How, how is it different? <laughs> you know, honestly, Nick, I'm not sure. I've never done hypnotherapy, but mm -hmm. it's not like you're hypnotizing okay. somebody. You're cut. I guess you could say you're getting them into a Zen state at points, but it's very much just their brain doing what it's supposed to be doing to heal. And are you, I'm assuming you're talking to them or asking them questions mm -hmm. during yeah, doing I'm, that? Yeah, I'm leading them through. I am we start off with, okay, what is the image that bothers you? What is the thought that bothers you? What is the emotion that goes with that? What do you feel in your body when you think about it? And then they'll say, okay, so I want you to focus that on that and watch the lights go back and forth. And I'll stop and I'll say, okay, what did you notice? And it's just very much a free association where they say, you know, oh, well, I feel really anxious or, well, you know, I was just thinking through the event that happened. And then we mm -hmm. go again and it just goes like that throughout. 
if somebody feels like they're stuck on something or they're having trouble feeling um, resolve about it, I might ask them some questions. Say, well, what would it be like to think about it this way? Mm -hmm. Or have you thought about this part of it? And you're talking about the specific incident, typically. Yes. That, that specific trauma that they've gone through. Mm -hmm. And again, that could be something that was an, an adverse childhood mm -hmm. um, injury as far, or a emotional injury, or it could be something that was an on-the-job trauma that they've experienced, correct? Absolutely. So it really doesn't matter whether it happened 15 years ago or 15 days ago. Anytime, 15 minutes ago. Really? Okay. You know, anytime you can do it. Mm -hmm. and, and how long is an average EMDR session? An hour. About an hour? Yeah. Okay. And as it sounds like from what you're talking about, it's, it's fairly intense. I mean, as far as... It can be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and both in a you know, negative sense and in a really good sense. People feel really good when they leave sometimes, a mm -hmm. lot of the time from EMDR. Mm -hmm. So I know that... You know, it's a lot of people out in the community right now that are therapists will say that they are EMDR trained. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you've done a lot more training and, and you have a number of certifications. So what what's diff what sets you apart from a lot of the other folks who, who say they are EMDR trained? Well, EMDR training is sort of the base of what you can do with EMDR. It involves, you know, two two day trainings, a few months apart, and a certain number of case consultation and client hours doing EMDR. And it's great. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You can do a lot of work with it, but I knew that I wanted to work with more complex cases. So I wanted to go further and get certified in it. And that involves, let's see, 50 some client EMDR hours, 20 to 30 supervision hours, letters of recommendation from peers and supervisors. There's just, a, there's a lot more to that. Right. And so, so obviously you've, you've delved into this, into this type of practice in, in a pretty great amount of detail. Mm -hmm. Right. So I noticed that you, you've got a couple of machines behind me here. Um, I was hoping that, I'm guessing these are the EMDR yes. machines. Can you talk <laughs> a little bit about them? So this is the light bar, and this mm -hmm. is what we use for eye movement. So also, I didn't say earlier, with the eye movements, it doesn't have to just be eye movements. You can really get your left and right side of the brain moving by any kind of stimulation to the two sides of your body. You can even use this with infants by tapping on their feet. Really? It's, yeah, it's okay. pretty amazing, actually. But this, which is my go-to, I love using the light bar. You just turn it on on the side. The person just follows the lights with their eyes back and forth. And is there, do you, does the speed of the lights change? Mm -hmm. Do you control the speed? And, and why can, would you do that? I can make it faster, which people typically don't like very much. So <laughs> I don't do I'm that. I'm busy now, right? Yeah, nobody likes that. So let's say I'm trying to get somebody to relax and use some some nice imagery. I'll turn it way down mm -hmm. and that'll kind of get them in the mode. Well, which I guess this could be why people think it's kind of like hypnotism. Right, right. I could see that. But typically for trauma reprocessing, I think this is a pretty good speed. And so they're just following this back and forth while you are talking to them and are asking mm -hmm. them questions about that, again, that specific trauma that they've gone through. Right. Or they're sitting in silence thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So, I've heard some people do EMDR, EMDR with their fingers going back and forth. Yeah, I started that way with code four using my finger because I didn't have the light bar. Okay. So I would have to be really close to people's faces mm -hmm. and just do this back and forth for the hour. Okay. Right. Gets really tiring. Yes, I bet it does. <laughs> <laughs> and you have another little device back here. What is this? Uh, these are the tappers. So the client would hold on to these, one in each hand. I don't know if they can hear that. Can you feel that? Yep. Yeah, it's kind of a vibrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that makes the left and the right side of the brain communicate back and forth when they feel that vibration going back and forth. 
so they have one in both hands as as that's happening. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then again, I'm assuming you can control the speed of that and right, so forth. and how the intensity of the vibration, all of that. Right. Um, you can also do it auditory with headphones. There would be sort of a beep going back and forth. So, for someone who maybe has never never come to Code Four or any other mm-hmm. or any other counseling service and has never been introduced to EMDR, but now they're watching this video and they're thinking, "Yeah, I went through a trauma as a child or a trauma in my." you know, within my work or a combination of the two. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess, how do they know they're, if they might be a good candidate and what, what processes should they use to look into that? Well, they need to talk to a therapist about it. You mm-hmm. know, whether or not that therapist is EMDR trained or certified, they should be able to point them in the direction of somebody who is if they aren't. Mm-hmm. Um, talking to peer support, you know, saying, hey, I think this might be something that would help me, and they could help point them in the right direction of where so to go. So utilizing peer support to say, let's get a hold of, yes, let's get a hold of our agency therapist and, and you know, forward them to you or, or another EMDR specialist. Exactly. Great, great. Um, as we said earlier, we've got a number of folks who are watching this right now who, mm-hmm. are, um, who are stepping up as peer support members. Um, is there anything that you would like to say to them um, mm. as as they watch this and what you know and what EMDR, what kind of resource you and EMDR could provide for them and any other message you'd have? Oh man, just you guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you for what you do for your brothers and sisters on the front lines. Um, you are probably a lot of times going to be the first step in this process to somebody getting help. And that is absolutely huge. We appreciate you so much for, for doing this extra work. Thank you. I mean, I, and like you just said, I mean, these folks are, um, you know, they're, they're, especially now they're coming into a really difficult time in policing Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, um, lots and lots of trauma out there. So it's really good for them to know what kinds of resources are available. Absolutely. If they have questions, can they, can they call you or email you? Absolutely. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. We'll make sure we provide them your email address and, and, and so forth. Yeah, so. I'd love to talk about it with anybody. All right. Well, thank you. So again, thank Tracy, you thank you so much for being here today. And thank you so much for agreeing to be part of this training and, mm-hmm. uh, and introducing EMDR. And so for those of you watching, um, She's the best of the best when it comes to this. And so if there's any questions, um, we will definitely provide uh, her contact information. Um, And again, thank you for doing what you do. Take care.